What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to use chords to find the radius of a circle. All right. So I'm going to go over two examples and so we're going to start with this one right here. Okay so first I just want to quickly remind you what a chord is. So a chord is just a straight line and the endpoints of that straight line, so for instance this line over here, that endpoint and that endpoint touch the edge of the circle. All right. So that's all a chord is. So as you can see, we're given a bunch of information here. So we're given this chord right here, and it also gives us the length is 16. It gives us this chord down here, and it's also 16. And it gives us the distance from this chord to the center as 7x minus 6. And the distance from this chord up here to the center is 4x plus 3. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is solve for x. Okay, how can we solve for x here? Well, one thing that you want to notice is that we have two chords, right? This one up here and this one down here. They're the exact same length. So if you have two chords in the same circle and they're the same length, that means they are both the same distance away to the center of the circle. Okay, so that just means that this distance right here from the chord to the center is the exact same as the distance from this chord to the center. Okay, so if we know those two distances are equal to each other, we could simply say 4x plus 3 is equal to 7x minus 6, right? So that's how we can solve 4x. So we're going to say that 4x plus 3 is equal to 7x minus 6. All right, let's get the x's to the right side over here. Subtract 4x. And let's get the numbers to the left side. So let's add 6 here, add 6 here. Here we get 9 is equal to 3x. So then here we can simply see that x is equal to 3. Okay, great. So and I'm going to erase this just to make some room. So now we know that x is equal to 3, right? So now we can plug it into either one of these expressions. We're going to get the exact same answer, right? Because they're equal to each other. So let's just plug it in over here. So if we plug in a 3 right there, we're going to have 4 times 3, which is 12. And 12 plus 3 is 15, right? So that means this one down here is also 15. Okay, so now that we know the distances from the chords, right, to the center of the circle, now we can find the radius. And the way that you do that is just draw a straight line from the center to one of the endpoints of one of the chords. And the reason we want to do that is because maybe you can see we have a right triangle now, right? Because we know the height of the triangle over here, it's 15. What about the distance of the triangle, the length of the triangle down here? Well, we know the whole thing is 16. So what would be half of 16? Well, that would be 8. Okay, and what would be the length of the radius, or in other words, the hypotenuse of this right triangle? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? So we don't know what the hypotenuse is, uh, so I'll just label it as C right now. So in order to find a missing side of a right triangle, we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, right? Where A and B are the two shorter sides and C is the hypotenuse. So let's plug in 15 and 8 for the two shorter sides. So we're going to have 15 squared plus 8 squared is equal to C squared. 15 squared is 225, 8 squared is 64, and that's equal to C squared. So here we get, it uh, looks like 289 is equal to C squared. And to solve for C and just get rid of this exponent, we simply have to take the square root of both sides. So then on this side, the square root and the squared exponent cancel out. So we're just left with C is equal to the square root of 289, which is 17. All right, so the radius of this circle, or you know, the hypotenuse of this right triangle, same thing, is equal to 17. Boom. All right, let's do one more example here. So with this circle over here, you can see, again, we're given two chords, right? This chord right here and this chord right here. But this time, we're not given the lengths of the chords. We're just given expressions. However, we are given the distance from the chord to the center, right? So the distance is 5 over here, and the distance is 5 over here. Okay, so since these two chords are the exact same distance away from the center, and they also form the same angle, right? They both form these 
right angles, 90 degree angles, that means the two chords are congruent. All right, so if they're congruent, that just means they're equal to each other. So the way we can solve for x in this case is by simply setting the two chord lengths or expressions equal to each other. So we're gonna say that 4x plus 4 is equal to 6x minus 6. So then here, uh, let's subtract 4x from both sides and move the numbers to the left side this time. So we get that 10 is equal to 2x. So we can see that x is equal to 5 this time, all right? So now we know that x is equal to 5, all right? So again, we can plug it into either one. Let's just plug it into this one up here. So four times five is 20 and 20 plus four is 24, all right? So the length of this, or of both of the chords are going to be, um, I'll just write it over here and over here, all right? And I'll just put parentheses around those just so we can see it a little bit more clearly. Okay, great. So now that we know what the chord lengths are, now we can, again, just draw a straight line from the center to one of the ends of the chords. So I'll just draw it from here and let's just draw it, let's just say this chord over here, okay? So as you can see, again, we have our right triangle, right? We have this side over here, we have the base right here, and the hypotenuse, or in other words, the radius, okay? So we're given that this short little side is five. Uh, what's the length of this guy over here? Well, if we know that the whole distance is 24, well, half of 24 is just 12, right? And then again, the hypotenuse, or the radius is what we're looking for, so we'll just label that again as C, okay? So again, to solve for the missing side of a right triangle, we can again use the Pythagorean theorem. I'll just write it out. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So in this case, we're going to have five squared plus 12 squared is equal to C squared. 25 plus 144 is equal to C squared. 169, this time is equal to C squared. And again, just to solve for C, we can take the square root of both sides, those cancel out. So we get here that C is equal to 13. All right, so the hypotenuse, or in other words, the radius is equal to 13, boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.